soil is a dark and silent world, full of tunnels and caverns where many living organisms thrive. Normally, we do not pay enough attention to the solid medium which is beneath our feet. However, the soil performs such important functions as the support of buildings, the digestion of waste added, water storage, and it sustains the plant that provides food. All the soils have layers roughly parallel to the surface, called horizons. The number and characteristics of these horizons indicate the most important processes that have been involved in the formation of soils, being therefore essential to know how to characterize them. The key task in profile description is recognizing how many horizons it contains and analyze those properties that distinguish them. To achieve our objective, we will take the following steps. To expose a soil profile, to identify the horizons, to mark the boundaries between horizons and to sample. If we want to understand the processes working in soil, we must study how the soil develops in depth. Usually, we only see the soil surface. If we want to study the vertical structure, it is necessary to use a rod cut on the slope or dig a hole in the ground called a soil pit that allows us to reach inside. It is interesting to reach a depth of 1.5 meters where most of the plant roots are concentrated. If the cut is not recently open, it is necessary to remove the surface layer that may have been contaminated. Approximately 30 or 40 centimeters wide should be cut and cleared down to the depth of the profile. The horizons can be differentiated by distinctive properties such as color, porosity, shear strength, stoniness, etc. Color differences are distinguished at first sight, but for other properties we need to sample aggregates from two different horizons to compare their shape and size. Shape and size of the pores, signs of biological activity, plasticity of soil materials, and appearance of modeling among others. The lower soil horizons present yellow-orange models on the grey background. This feature indicates changes in iron redox potential and is associated with a water table fluctuating below the model horizon. Another important feature is the presence of brick fragments evenly distributed at about 30 centimeters depth. This suggests that this soil is very young and it is formed on river sediment, which origin is associated to human activity. Once the horizons of the profile have been determined, boundaries should be marked. It should be taken into account that limits may be linear or wavy, gradual or abrupt. A gradual limit occurs when the soil properties do not change abruptly from one horizon to another. The change becomes evident within a thickness of several centimeters. Once identified and marked the boundaries with the aid of spatulas, the horizons are numbered starting with the superficial one. 
Next step is to measure the depth of each horizon. To achieve this, we put a tape measure in vertical position with a zero of the scale at the sole surface. Each horizon is bound by the depth of its upper and lower limits. A profile scheme can be performed with the data taken in the field. The field study can be complemented with laboratory analysis of soil samples that have been taken from all the horizons. The best is to start sampling the lower horizon. For that, we place a try at the lower limit and with the help of a peak, we take a regular quantity of sample from all the depth of the horizon. The sample is transferred to a plastic bag, then is properly labeled and closed. In summary, the steps to describe a soil profile are Expose a soil profile by a vertical cut through the soil, 30 to 40 centimeters wide. Identify the horizons on the basis of distinguishing characteristics. Mark the boundaries between horizons. Measure the depths of the limits perform a profile screen and take sample of each one of the horizons.